Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! On Thursday, survivors and families of the victims of the Grenfell Tower fire will gather for a special remembrance service at St Paul's Cathedral, six months to the day that 71 people died in the disaster. This week on the News at Six, we'll be featuring some of those affected by the fire. Tonight, we hear about the community response from Reverend Mike Long, minister of the Notting Hill Methodist Church, which sits in the shadow of the tower. I remember a phone call um, waking me up from one of, my, one of my church members telling me that the tower was on fire. We're the closest church to the Grenfell Tower site. And when the building was opened, obviously we're very close to what was going on. There's a, there's a huge amount of noise. Emergency vehicles moving, um, the streets were full of people. The, the sights, the sounds, the smells were, were, were awful. I think many of us didn't want to look at that stage. Um, it, it was it was too uh, too dreadful a sight, um, and and although we didn't know the the number of, of people who'd lost their lives, it was very evident that, that the death toll would be enormous, uh, that this was a, a complete catastrophe. People were, I think, so shocked and horrified, they were galvanised into some form of action. We were inundated not only with people offering their services, but people coming and offering money. Uh, we had donation boxes uh, very quickly up and running in our, in our building and people were stuffing notes, coins. Sometimes people were giving us hundreds of pounds so that we could then offer them out to the local community who needed them, people affected by Grenfell Tower. By early afternoon, we had put signs on the building saying, no more donations, please because the building was full. The scenes for the first few days were, were utter chaos. Six months on, it feels like a very long period of time since the fire. For some, I suspect it's felt interminable. Uh, they may have only just received news of loved ones. The recovery of operation has only just been completed. It still feels as though the heart has been ripped out of the community. Uh, then it was chaotic, noisy, hot, incredibly busy. Six months on now, it's, it's calmer, it's dark, it's cold, and it still feels as horrible. Sorry. That was Reverend Mike Long, minister of the Notting Hill Methodist Church. Now, survivors and bereaved relatives of the Grenfell Tower fire must be at the heart of a public inquiry into the disaster. The judge overseeing it was told today. As the hearing into how it will be conducted took place in central London, lawyers representing those affected by the fire said their voices must be heard. Our social affairs editor, Jackie Long, reports. They filed past a handful of protesters outside to raise the question of would there be justice for Grenfell inside. In a packed hall, a promise set out from the very start. They would be heard. It is of great importance to the inquiry that each individual voice of those most affected by the fire is heard. This was a shared trauma, a community devastated. But each of them has their own story to tell. After that opening statement on behalf of the inquiry, it was the job of the chair to sit back and listen. Because one of the things that um, will not be lost on you or anybody else who sits in this inquiry, uh, you can see most of the victim core participants because they're sitting right at the back. You couldn't get a more diverse group of people. Now look at the lawyers. Fairly homogenised group, wouldn't you agree? Apart from the odd exception here and there. What must they be thinking in terms of, are we going to get justice? Do they understand us? 
there were renewed calls to press the Prime Minister for a more diverse panel to sit alongside Sir Martin. We say that the decision-making process cannot be left to one person. It should be reflective of the community and, to some extent, the public at large. But Sir Martin said a decision on such a panel was one for the Prime Minister. Today was billed as a procedural hearing, all about process. But in reality, it was about one thing, trust. Trying to convince the bereaved and survivors of the Grenfell fire that they could have confidence in this inquiry, that it would help deliver the answers to the justice they so desperately seek. But as the day wore on, it became clear there's still a long way to go. Tiago Alves escaped from the 13th floor with his parents and younger sister. The lawyers today making the case for you to be listened to, to be active participants. How confident are you that that will happen? I'm very confident that the lawyers will listen to us. I'm not very confident that the inquiry team will. Again, I don't want to jump to, you know, I don't want to jump the gun. I, I, I truly believe that the right thing, you know, in the end, everything will be right. Now, just needs to make, just need to make sure that we keep on top of them and we make sure that we voice our concerns so that the right things come out in the end. There wouldn't be an inquiry if we're not feeding to it. So we have to, to, to give our feelings, our experience, and what we went through, that will help the inquiry. Otherwise, there's going to be no inquiry. But the wait to see whether their voices are not only heard but acted upon may take some time. The first phase not expected to end until next autumn. Jackie Long reporting. Well, now, earlier I spoke to Natasha Elcock, who lived on the 11th floor of Grenfell Tower. She escaped along with her six-year-old daughter and boyfriend that night and is now a spokesperson for Grenfell United. That's a support group for the survivors and relatives of those who died. And I began by asking her what she and other survivors want from the inquiry. What we're asking for is that the Prime Minister listens to our concerns. We would like to see some panel members that represent the diversity of the community that also have the expertise um, to support the judge. Um, but what, what's most important about panel members is that they'll be able to report directly to Theresa May. What we feel at this stage is that this job is way too big for one man. Um, and that, you know, that's our opinion, that if there are panel members that have that report in back into Theresa May, then it will ensure that our voices are heard. Really. Could you tell at all whether the inquiry was interested in your existence as a, as a campaigning group? Every individual survivor and bereaved member um, has core, core participant status. Grenfell United doesn't. But what Grenfell United is there is to advocate for those that can't advocate for themselves. We, mm. You know, we, we've spent the last six months um, having dialogue with local and national government um, and trying to be the voice to ensure that everybody's voice is listened to and heard. So if we were hearing your voice right now, would the priority be the housing still? Priority is definitely housing still at this stage because there's short-term and long-term goals. Our long-term goal will always be justice. Short-term is getting people homes. I mean, four out of five families are still living in, in hotel, you know, hotel accommodation. Um, it's really important that that moves a lot quicker than it currently is. Is that in part because people are finding it very difficult to move on anyway or because actually n not the right housing circumstances are being offered? So there's a number of elements, a number of elements to the housing situation. Um, as it's been publicly made aware, the council are going out and purchasing properties because there's a shortage of social housing in North Kensington or in Kensington and Chelsea in general. But what's actually happening behind the scenes is that people are being offered places and then when they're getting there to those particular properties, the tenancies may be wrong. Now, you know, there was a lot of promises made early on that the tenancies would be like for like. So we're talking about kind of things like right to buy, the right to leave it to your child yeah, continue. succession rights, right to buy. Now, I know the council are now in a position where they've, along, you know, with all the different solicitors that we're all using, have finally sorted that out. So there should be some movement very, very mm. imminently. Um, but then you're now at this six-month point where the trauma is now starting to set in. I moved out of hotel accommodation back in September, and the small things such as going to do your first food shop in three months, um, for me, at that, at that point, it was a bit of a culture shock, going into a supermarket and having to buy salt and pepper and 
all of those types of things that you would just have in the cupboard. You know, it's the small things that people are gradually going to have to do as they move on with their lives. I mean, obviously, the council lost most of your confidence, obviously, with the, the burning of the tower. Absolutely. Uh, but since then, has the culture changed in the relationship between the council and you? I'd say no. Uh, we've heard some survivors talking about, uh, you know, caseworkers changing a lot, you know, getting so a new one. Some people have been changed up to 11 or 12 times, key worker housing officers, so there's no consistency in the people that they're dealing with. But does the organisation, Grenfell United, which after all represents at least 50 families, yeah. does it have confidence in the borough to sort this out? You know, they didn't treat us very well before the fire, during the fire, and now after the fire. So it's quite... It's... You know, you can see the culture has to change within the council. It's absolutely essential that the culture changes, that we're no longer treated in the way that we are, we have been or, or continue to be treated. Natasha Elcock, thank you very much indeed for talking You're to us. You're most welcome. Well, Natasha Elcock, whom I'm speaking to there, uh, is the spokesperson for Grenfell United. Uh, the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea told us that they have 300 staff working around the clock doing everything they can to rehouse the families. They say they are now leading the biggest house purchasing programme by any local authority in recent history. The views of bereaved families and survivors were put before the inquiry into the Grenfell Tower disaster today, which is holding two days of preliminary hearings. Lawyers say those affected by the fire are already feeling excluded from the proceedings and called for a special panel to sit alongside the inquiry judge. They said evidence from the people who suffered could save lives by helping ensure something like this never happens again. They came to hear about procedures and timetables, but Grenfell families still want fundamental changes to this inquiry. They packed in to watch their barrister point to the families at the back of the hall, explaining the lack of trust. You couldn't get a more diverse group of people. Now look at the lawyers. Fairly homogenised group, wouldn't you agree? What must they be thinking in terms of, are we going to get justice? Do they understand us? There is an immense task ahead of them. The inquiry is expected to look at 31 million documents and 2,500 exhibits. Today, the Metropolitan Police confirmed they're investigating offences that include misconduct in public office, breaches of fire safety regulations, manslaughter and corporate manslaughter. A lawyer representing the bereaved families wants a panel of four people to sit with the judge. You yourself cannot be expected to reflect the diversity in one person. No one person on earth could do that. Karim Musili, who lost his uncle in the fire, says it needs to be a panel that understands their lives. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has to reflect our ethnicity and religious background, no. We just want there to be people that understand our concerns, our community. You know, for example, it could be somebody who'd lived in social housing or a tower block who had been through that process. Somebody that just understands us. Tomorrow, survivors and those who lost relatives will take a petition to the Prime Minister with this demand. At the end of today's submissions, here in central London, the message is loud and clear. Families want to see more diversity and inclusivity built into this inquiry. Only the chairman can decide if that's going to happen. Juliet Bremner, News at 10.